Okay, we're going to talk about anatomy of axial CT scans and focus on the thoracic cavity. My name is Dr. Morton. I'm the noted anatomist, and we're going to approach this by talking about the anatomy of the axial sections in the thoracic region, talking about structures of the back, thoracic wall, respiratory system, and the cardiovascular system. So this is not meant to be a comprehensive radiological uh, view of axial CT scans and thoracic cavity. The context is I'm an anatomy professor and I teach uh, health professional students and I want them to know the anatomy in the context of imaging. So we're going to do thoracic axial CT scans. And so here we're going to go scroll down from the uh, neck all the way down into the abdominal cavity and then we're going to scroll all the way back up as well. Okay, so we're going to talk about this anatomy. So let's first talk about the back and look at vertebral structures. So here we have one thoracic vertebra. I know it's a thoracic vertebra because look, there are ribs on either side articulating with it. So that's the vertebral body. It's the most ventral part because ventral goes towards the front. Um, and I should do the orientation which you look at axial CTs. The top of the screen is anterior. The bottom of the screen is posterior. I remember this by the patient is belly up. And then this is the right hand side and this is the left hand side because you always view axial CT or MRI images from the foot to the head. So if I forget, I take my right hand and shake their right hand. So there's the vertebral body. These are pedicles. This is a transverse process and that's a transverse process and that's a spinous process. And this connecting is the lamina. Lamina here lamina here. And this opening in the middle is called the vertebral foramen. That if we keep going in super adjacent levels, that vertebral foramen becomes a vertebral canal. And the spinal cord and meninges are inside of that. Okay. And so here you see an intervertebral foramen because you don't see a pedicle. As soon as we go down, you see a pedicle on this one and a pedicle on this one. And the space in between them is called an intervertebral foramen. Okay. And then the ribs form articulations with various parts of the thoracic vertebra, okay? Um, now, the paraspinal muscles are these groups of muscles that are para, beside, the spinous process. And so what happens then is we see um, erector spinae or deep uh, back muscles and paraspinal muscles there. Here's our actually trapezius. It's beautiful trapezius sticking up right there. It's awesome. All right, now let's talk about the rib cage for a minute, like the thoracic wall. I'm going to go up for a minute, and I know this is my sternum. It's the most ventral. That's that's a renubrium right there. But there's our sternum going down. Uh, it's the breastbone right in the front. And as we go up, up, we see this really big bone right here. Okay, that I think is the the clavicle because it is articulating with the manubrium, and then it comes out laterally. Now to make sure, this should go to the scapula. And I see this bone right here. So let's follow that bone. Follow the bone. Follow the bone. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, ah! there. In the thoracic uh, region on the back, we know it's the thoracic region because we have these two big black areas where the lungs are. That is the scapula. Okay. Uh, the scapula is the medial margin, and there's the spine of the scapula. And if we go up, watch glenoid cavity, head of the humerus right there. So I know this is my scapula, which I means that articulation through the acromion and the clavicle. So that's our clavicle right there, okay? Now, and we talked about the sternum. Now look at the ribs. We already introduced the ribs. So we see these ribs articulating with thoracic vertebrae and then they course to articulate ventrally um, with that sternum. Um, but the thing about ribs is they course like a tall person hugging a short person. So if, if I go down and I find this is about the level of the sternal angle because I see the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk, ascending and descending aorta, and the bifurcation of the um, trachea, the crina. So let's say this is T4. That means this is the fourth rib. If that's the fourth rib, it should come across and go to the sternum. But what happens is these ribs course like a tall person hugging a short person, which means the more anterior they go, this rib comes probably from T3, from the one above, okay? Uh, those are the ribs. Now, some of the muscles that we see here, um, there is our pectoralis major, and below, deep to that, there's our pec minor. It's coming ribs three, four, and five to the coracoid process of the scapula. And then we also have our serratus anterior, which comes from the first eight or nine ribs to the medial margin of the scapula. Well, there's a medial margin of the scapula, and there's a muscle that's just hugging, hugging the outside of the ribs. That's the serratus anterior. 
helps to protract the scapula and keep the medial margin up against the thoracic wall. And finally, our intercostal muscles. Well, they're between our ribs. And white things right here are the ribs. So we find a rib and any space between adjacent ribs like there, that's where our intercostal muscles are located there. Okay. Now let's talk about the respiratory system. When you look, you see this big black space and big black space. Well, this is the right lung going from the apex of the lung all the way down to the diaphragm. And this is the left uh, lung going all the way up to the apex. Now, the thing is, when you see something as dark as this, you know, oh, that's got to be air. And then you see this circle in the middle and you think it's the exact same darkness. And so that is showing our trachea. And let's follow the trachea down, trachea down, trachea down. Watch, you ready? Bam! One more time, ready? Ah, see that? That's the carina. And that's where the trachea gives rise to the right primary bronchus and left primary bronchus, or right main stem and left main stem bronchi. Now let's follow this left one out. Trachea, left mainstream bronchus, left mainstream bronchus, and then bam! You see that? Where it branches into now in the left lung, there's only two lobes, so it's going to be... Uh, maybe upper and lower lobes. Um, the key is we see that secondary bronchi forming. And this is trachea, trachea, right primary bronchus. And then you're going to see, you get this idea of the secondary branching. You just don't see it as well. So the lungs are going to be forming an apex up here, right by rib one in the clavicle. I would guess that's rib one. But now let's go down, go down, go down. You're going to see the lungs sit right on top of the diaphragm. And we see the diaphragm appearing right there. There's our diaphragm. And, but the diaphragm is a big dome-shaped structure. And so what we have is this very... A narrow crevice between the ribs in white and the diaphragm. The diaphragm, even though that's the liver, the diaphragm is still, you get an idea, covering this whole thing. So they call this the recess between the ribs and the diaphragm. Costal phrenic recess or costal diaphragmatic recess. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about the cardiovascular system. So here we've got the lungs on either side and that is showing the heart in the middle. And so what we've got right here is um, that right atrium. And the right atrium is receiving deoxygenated blood from the rest of the body. So let's take, I'm, I'm gonna do this again. There's our right atrium. And the main thing I think of this is the right atrium forms the right border of the heart. And the right atrium is supplied by the coronary sinus, which we won't see, but the superior vena cava. So let's follow up, up, ooh. Oh, there it comes, there it comes. Oh, look at that beautiful superior vena cava. And what forms the superior vena cava? Shing! The left brachiocephalic vein and the right brachiocephalic vein. They come down, they form wonder twin powers, and there is our superior vena cava. It's bright because there's a contrast in it. And it's going to come down and go into that right atrium. Let's keep going because it's also fed by the inferior vena cava right there. Okay, There's our inferior vena cava going into the right atrium. The right atrium gives rise to blood into the right ventricle, which forms the anterior border of the heart. And that uh, is the, so the right ventricle is the most anterior border of the heart, and it gives rise to the pulmonary trunk. So let's go right ventricle, right ventricle. Oh, you see that? Shing! You see that pulmonary trunk giving rise to the left and right pulmonary arteries that are supplying deoxygenated blood to the lungs. So let's do that one more time. There it is, okay? And the deoxygenated blood then goes to the lungs and gets oxygenated. And so that's going to return to the left atrium via the pulmonary vein. So let's find that left atrium. It's the most posteriorly oriented chamber of the heart. There it is on the back of the heart. And there are these pulmonary veins coming into it right there, okay? And that's bringing oxygenated blood to the left atrium. Uh, and then that gives rise to our left ventricle, which forms the left border of the heart and the apex that point, okay? There's oxygenated blood. And since that's the left ventricle and that's the right ventricle, right ventricle, left ventricle, that's the interventricular septum. And if we go like this, left atrium, right atrium, that's the interatrial septum. So let's now take a look at that left ventricle is going to give rise to, shing, right there. There's our aorta. And in cross-section, the aorta looks like a dinner plate, okay? And if we follow up, there's our ascending aorta to the aortic arch and then down to the descending aorta. Let's go back up to the aortic arch for a second. If we keep going, that aortic arch gives rise to three branches. You ready? Watch. Bam. You see that? One more time. See that aortic arch? Watch. Bam. 
brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery. Now watch this brachiocephalic trunk. This isn't the best example, but there's our right subclavian and right common carotid artery. One more time. Bam. Right subclavian, right common carotid artery. And there's our left common carotid artery and our left subclavian artery. Okay. So let's take this aortic arch and then go down. There's our descending aorta, descending aorta, and there's a posterior intercostal artery and a posterior intercostal artery and a posterior intercostal artery. It's beautiful, isn't it? A fall descending aorta, descending, 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 piercing through the diaphragm and now inside the abdominal cavity. And we know we're in the abdominal cavity because look, there's kidneys on either side. There's the liver and we will cover that on another time. So in acknowledgements, the radiopd.org, that is the uh, it's an amazing resource if you want to find other examples of tons of tutorials, lots and lots of images, and lots of clinical information. So that's uh, the axial thoracic CT scans and the anatomy of them in a nutshell. Hey, bud, I just finished.